You're listening to Weird Medicine with Dr. Steve on the Riotcast Network, riotcast.com. I've got diphtheria crushing my esophagus. I've got Ebola vibes dripping from my nose. I've got the leprosy of the heart valve exacerbating my incredible woes. I want to take my brain out and blast with the wave, an ultrasonic, echographic, and a pulsating shave. I want a magic pill for all my ailments, the health equivalent of Citizen Kane. And if I don't get it now in the tablet, I think I'm doomed and I'll have to go insane. I want a requiem for my disease, so I'm paging Dr. Steve. Dr. Steve! No. It's Weird Medicine, the first and still only uncensored medical show in the history of broadcast radio, now a podcast. I'm Dr. Steve with my little pal, Dr. Scott, the traditional Chinese medical practitioner who keeps the alternative medicine wackos at bay. Hello, Dr. Scott. Hey, Dr. Steve. And she who will do most anything for a glass of expensive wine, it's Lady Diagnosis. Hey, Dr. Steve. And she who won't do anything but still demands the expensive glass of expensive wine. That's my wife, Tacey. Hello, everyone. <laughs> this is a show for people who would never listen to a medical show. Oh, God, I'm so glad you laughed at that. Uh, medical show on the radio or the internet. If you have a question you're embarrassed to take to your regular medical provider, or if you can't find an answer anywhere else, give us a call. 347-766-4323. That's 347-POOHEAD. If you're listening to us live, the number is 754-227-3647. That's 754. Take it away, Tay. Yeah, I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> All right, lady diagnosis, that's yours. You're the understudy. Bear nip. Oh, 754 bear nip or 754 22 penis, which is That's your favorite. That's my favorite. Follow us on Twitter at Weird Medicine or Lady Diagnosis or Dr. Scott WM. Or you can also follow our intern 20, 29 cent, 49 cent at uh, WM the intern. Uh, visit our website at weirdmedicine.com for podcast medical news and stuff you can buy or go to our merchandise store at cafepress.com slash weirdmedicine. Most importantly, we are not your medical providers. Take everything you hear with a grain of salt. Don't act on anything you hear on this show without talking it over with your doctor, nurse practitioner, physician assistant, pharmacist, chiropractor, acupuncturist, yoga master, physical therapist, or whatever. All right, very good. And we have the delightful Tacey here today. And uh, before we leave, you got to remind me to bleep out that thing in the last show. I wrote okay. it down. Bleep. Thank you, thank you. Well, I, I need to do it today. But yes, I will remind you. All right, very good. So, yeah, we had a bleepable moment there, Taste. Ooh. So, this is the first show after the insanely successful Vic Henley show on <laughs> August 2nd. Of course, we're looking into we the future because we're recording this Great on uh, July 27th. <laughs> so, <laughs> But it's coming up fast. I, I do hope people came and had a wonderful time. And then uh, came to the after party at the beer run. You did? I came, yeah. Oh, that's good. I'm uh, assuming your boyfriend was with you. So, <laughs> don't forget <laughs> to check. Oh, I thought that was the joke you were making. I didn't realize you were <laughs> not making a double entendre. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, don't forget to check out stuff.drsteve.com. That's stuff.drsteve.com for all your Amazon needs. You can just click through and go straight to Amazon, or you can scroll down and uh, find uh, products like IB Guard and um, melatonin, melatonin gummies, gummies and all kinds of other stuff. Uh, iontophoresis for people who sweat too much in their hands and feet and even armpits. Uh, so check out stuff.drsteve.com. Don't forget tweakedaudio.com. Offer code FLUID, F-L-U-I-D, for the uh, best earbuds on the market for the price and the best customer service anywhere. 33% off. It's like buying three things and you only have to pay for two of them. Uh, and then Dr. Scott's website at simplyherbals.net, simplyherbals.net. You getting any traffic there these days from Weird Medicine listeners? Absolutely. Yeah. Great support. Oh, good. Good, good, good. And uh, check out premium.drsteve.com if you want archives to this show. It's buck ninety nine a month. And you get all the archives to the show. I don't know why you would want that, but it's uh, you can uh, also access all of our content through the app that you can get either on the Google Play Store or iTunes uh, App Store, uh, and it's just called Weird Medicine. So download that. It's a way easier way to listen to this than trying to use. Although we do like Play a Pod, and uh, you can always listen to us on DrSteve.com or Riotcast. But right now, our favorite third-party 
player is play a pod. All right. There you go. Yes. Don't know why you have an opinion about your favorite third party podcast <laughs> player, but, <laughs> but I do, and that's what it is. So fuck all of y'all. All right. Uh, we have a caller that's been on hold for 40 minutes. Oh, no. Don't say it. No. Don't say no. it. I don't blame them. Okay, I don't either. They're going to call back. They're going to call back. Um, we have a call. F- uh, this is a lady diagnosis call. Oh. So let's see what this is about. I honestly can't remember what this is. It has some- hey, just listen to the uh, Sir Sex Sir- show. Um, lady diagnosis is a uh, response to the blowjobs while pregnant. She said something about nobody wants anything in their throat. Nice. She's a keeper. <laughs> Do you you remember what that was about? No. Somebody talking about getting blowjobs while they were pregnant and you were like, I'm not doing that. I can't remember. I don't recall that. Okay. Well, you got props from somebody anyway. Apparently you said something hilarious. Way to go. Thanks. So, Thanks. So you're pregnant and your husband is demanding that he be satisfied Mm -hmm. in some way. Are you giving him a blowjob when you're pregnant? No. Tacy is a that would that be a, a that Tacy is a, a is a no. I'm oh wait guessing. a minute though, when I was pregnant, I really liked it. You so, did? Yeah, I might. I would. Hell, I don't know, and I'm not doing anything to find out. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I liked it when when you were on the Clomid. Now I didn't like the whole crying for three days every time that you know that you went off the Clomid. Uh, uh, but I liked the fact that. I mean, Tacey and I were at a party. We were having a party at our house, and it was our night that we had to have intercourse. So, so we did. So we did. We <laughs> went upstairs. To. and Damn it. Yeah, well, you had to. You had to do it a certain on certain mm-hmm. days. Everybody oh. knew it, too. Yep, and it was just oh. like a medieval wedding where everyone's standing outside the door making sure that Clapping the as husband is the consummating the marriage, right? <laughs> I think my mom was there, too. That was funny. That's hilarious. <laughs> We got so uh-huh. wasted at our wedding, which our wedding was awesome. Wish uh, I was there. And it was, uh, we didn't consummate our marriage for 10 days after that. That's how long it took for us to get over it. <laughs> well, there were other things going on. That's a hell of a party. I'm, I'm not that. I'm not that bad. No, I wasn't saying it was you. I mean, I'm. Uh, There's no such thing as a 10 day hangover. Yeah, do you you remember how that was? It, it was, there was bad. A, it was bad. It lasted several days, and then we were just like, "Oh God!" The whole thought of of even moving made me kind of sick. Mm, it was so, bad. anyway, all right, all right. What were we talking about? Blowjobs. Oh yeah. So okay. So we got Tacy's <laughs> thing. It was a no, a strong no, and, and then, then a kind of well, maybe, maybe, yeah, probably. I was pretty horny when I was pregnant, yeah, so me I probably would have. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. There you go. Yeah, I'm never the thought against of it. it. Yeah, the thought of it sounds gross, but then I remember yeah, I was. Yeah, you're bapping I your dick it. against this poor kid's head and against their will. Oh, poor wee pa. <laughs> hmm. All right. Hmm. Okay, well, anyway, you got props from somebody. They well, thought something you thanks, said was man. funny, but I couldn't find it. I went back to try to find it, and I had no clue. Where it had to be a long time ago. So. All right. Well, let's take another. Yeah, let's take some medical questions. Don't take advice from some asshole on the radio. Was that the second thing? Number one thing. Oh, it's the number one thing. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ronnie B. All right. It's a good thing Ronnie's here. I know. I wish he was here. I wish he were here. Nobody wants anything in their throat. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Hello, Dr. Steve. This is Trucker Steve. I called you last, uh, sometime in the last year. And you probably remember I. My problem was I was bloating after... No, I, I don't remember. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> no, I don't remember. After eight, like three or four hours after eight, I would get sick and throw up real bad. Remember he threw well, up? I called him with my uh, doctor, and uh, what I got wrong, we found out what was wrong with me was I've got a uh, closure for my bottom of my stomach going into my small intestine. And I went up to, and you'll know where this is, I went up to Holston Valley Hospital there at Kingsport gastronomical service or whatever you call never it. Never heard of them. Never heard of them. I did it, but she said that... The <laughs> now i got to cut out. i got to... I got a stretcher. Okay, nine minutes and 43 and seconds. And my food wasn't going into my small intestine. Yep. So when it wasn't going through, it was just sitting in there turning back to liquid, and that's what was making me sick. So yeah. Now I've got to deal with maybe going to a surgeon and 
I don't know, I thought maybe get your uh, idea of what you thought uh, might be the, what the, the cure for that was. Either have to go into surgery, and I've heard that I have had my small intestine cut, re so. Well, maybe. I'll get your opinion on that. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Bye. old buddy. Um, First okay. of all, that's hilarious. What? <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, I know, I know, I know. That we, that's the second show we've had to bleep a doctor's name, even though he was given her, him or her props. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so this guy probably has this is, and I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Sure. But the most likely thing when he's saying he has an obstruction from his stomach going into the intestine is mostly likely a thing called idiopathic hypertrophic pyloric stenos- stenosis. This in adults is a rare disease. So well, let's that's what I was let's, say. <clears throat> let's break those words down. So idiopathic means we don't know where it, why it happens. Hypertrophic meaning an overgrowth of some tissue. In this case, mm-hmm. this would be the muscle tissue in the pylorus, which is the valve that goes. And it's, valve is kind of a weird name for it, but it is a valve if, by definition. Uh, you know, it closes to keep the stomach contents in the stomach, and then as the as you get more and more liquidy stuff in the in the stomach, it'll start opening up so that you can uh, get, pass the food that's been finished in the stomach into the intestine to finish the rest of the uh, digestive process. And the first place it's going to go to is the duodenum or duodenum, depending on where you're from. And uh, uh, and that's where bile gets mixed in and all kinds of stuff like that. So um, these people, and, and then pyloric stenosis, stenosis just means narrowing. So they have a, an unknown cause of an overgrowth of the pyloric muscle causing narrowing and that's that's what idiopathic hypertrophic pyloric stenosis means. And uh, they have done things like taking out part of the stomach where mm-hmm. you just cut out the pylorus and the end, one part of the stomach, one part of the duodenum and just sew them together. Yeah. Just cut out the offending. If your eye offend the, offendeth thee, mm-hmm. cut it out. Be gone. And, uh, and they've done uh, 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 other things like gastroenterostomies pyloromyotomies. Ooh, that's a fun one. That's where you go in. So pyloro means the pylorus. <clears throat> Myotomy means cutting of the muscle. Okay. Myo being muscle, otomy being cutting. So py- pyloromyotomy. Pyloroplasty, where you go in and pyloro, again being pylorus, plasty meaning changing the shape of. Mm-hmm. Okay. And endoscopic dilatation, that's where they go in, down, uh, through your mouth, stick a balloon in the pylorus, and just blow it up and try to to stretch it out. Uh, They've all had variable results. Um, There is a new thing where they can do this under uh, laparoscopic means where they don't have to cut you open. Mm -hmm. Well, they still have to cut you open. Still surgery, But it's a much smaller incision. They Mm -hmm. use a scope and go in and actually do the pyloroplasty where they go in and surgically make that hole bigger, mm-hmm. okay? So that's probably what's going to happen. Uh, he would have to see uh, a surgeon that is trained in that if he wants to have the laparoscopic version. He can search around and see. Mm-hmm. But um, if that's what's happening, yeah, he, got, he has to have that fixed because yep. his stomach is just filling up with fluid, and it's not being passed to the duodenum. It's got nowhere to go except for him to puke it back yep. up. And that's why we probably told him he had reflux, which – Technically, we were right. We that were is right. reflux. It is right. It, the, the contents are refluxing, but it's caused by this rare condition. And, and, and certainly slow gastric emptying, too. And it could be because of that, that stenosis. So. Well, I'm family. sure we were right. Yeah. 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 I'm sure, yeah. So there you go. Today's episode is brought to you by Angie. Angie has made it easier than ever to connect with skilled professionals to get all your jobs and projects done well. Let me tell you, there's the version of it where you try to do something at home, and then there's a version of it where you have someone help you, you watch them do it the right way, and you go, thank God I didn't try to do that myself. (laughs) I have fully done things around the home that I think look good, and then a bang in the night, and I wake up to a shelf collapsing, a painting falling off the wall. Like it, I've, I've seen it all go south. I own a home, and I can tell you... I know how much work it can take, whether it's everyday maintenance and repairs or making dream projects a reality. It can be hard just to know where to start. But now all you need to do is Angie that and find a skilled local pro who will deliver the quality and expertise you need. Whatever your home project, big or small, indoor or outdoor, you can Angie that and connect with skilled professionals to get the project done well. Right now, one of my wish lists is I want a bike for my condo in Milwaukee and I would love to rig it up on a pulley in the ceiling because I have one of those like lofted ceilings. 
but I'm so scared to try that on my own. Angie has 20 years of home experience and they've combined it with new tools to simplify the whole process. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie can handle the rest from start to finish or help you compare quotes from multiple pros and connect instantly, which means you can take care of any home project in just a few taps. Because when it comes to getting the most out of your home, you can do this when you Angie that. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. All right. Let's take a call from area code 717. 717, you are on Weird Medicine. How can we help? Hi, Dr. Steve. Hey. Uh, son of Fritz. Hey, hey, Son of Fritz. Hey, Hello, son. man. It's been a long time. How you doing? Yeah, hey, yeah. I was going to say, I know that voice. Thank so, you, thank yeah, you. I knew that voice immediately, too. <laughs> Son of Fritz, you can check out his artwork. Uh-huh. The easiest place you can check it out is at flatusflute.com if it's still up. And uh, Should be. he is a, an incredible graphic artist and designer and, um, um, you know, and an all-around good guy. So anyway, what can we do for you? Uh, well, uh, I was on uh, antibiotics for three weeks um, uh, it's um, dicoxy, clisinol, whatever. What? Uh, hexate for um, anti uh, the, for um, a tick bite. Oh, okay. Probably doxycycline yeah. would be my guess. Doxycycline yeah, highclate. Thank you. Okay, very good. Yeah. Okay. And uh, my question is, how long do I have to worry about uh, getting something like clostridium difficile? Oh, you you would know. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you're off now. of it now, right? Yeah. <laughs> you would know. Yeah, for about three weeks. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, um, so. you know, you're right. Re- antibiotic use is a real risk factor for Clostridium difficile infection, or C. diff. It also, we'll call it pseudomembranous colitis. And what happens is this Clostridium bacteria is uh, not killed with normal antibiotics, but uh, the rest of our bacteria in the gut can be killed with it. And uh, so all of a sudden, this clostridium goes, well, wait a minute, all my neighbors moved away. I'm just going to move into their houses. And it just starts growing and reproducing, and it makes these plaques, and it gives you a, can be a life-threatening diarrhea, but not usually in somebody as hale and hearty as, as uh, Son of Fritz is. But, um, you know, the people who usually are harmed by this are the people who are frail, uh, chronically ill, or the elderly. Now, um, I, doxycycline is associated with lower risk of Clostridium difficile infection than any, just about any other antibiotic. And they've even done studies to see if you could give people doxycycline, would it prevent it? And hmm. uh, they did a, um, let me see, uh, let me see how many, 2,305 unique patients were studied and 43 patients developed uh, Clostridium within 30 days of this uh uh, antibiotic called ceftriaxone or rocephin, and uh, it was an incidence of 5.6 per 10,000 patient days. And in the people that got doxycycline along with it, it was 1.67 cases. So that was a, a very um, 1.67 cases per 10,000 patient days. So uh, doxycycline was associated with a lower risk of CDI, and guidelines recommend this combination as a second-line regimen for some patients with community-acquired pneumonia, and further clinical studies would help define whether doxycycline-containing regimens should be a preferred therapy for this condition. So I think you're in, if you haven't developed it yet, you're in pretty good shape. And as a matter of fact, you were on the exact drug that probably has the least incidence of causing uh, pseudomembranous uh, colitis. So I think you're in good shape. Yay. 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 Congratulations. Good job. All right. So this is what I would tell your the prescribing physician. Give yourself a bill. For prescribing doxycycline in your case. So the answer was no? No. The an- <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> well, welcome back, lady diagnosis. That was a long dissertation yeah, well, for this, no. I got... 30 fucking minutes to kill. <laughs> of course I'm going to give I a blowhard response. I just wanted to make sure yes, that was the answer. Thank you. Yeah, so he's in good shape. How's everything All else right, going? Good. Okay, buddy. Huh? Uh, everything. But Yeah, everything otherwise is fine. Oh, good, just, good. Uh, just quiet. Okay. Just getting bitten by ticks and all that stuff up here in Pennsylvania. Oh, understand, understand. Mm-hmm. I've seen a couple of cases of Lyme disease, and I've diagnosed a few of them, uh, particularly when I was in Vermont. 
And uh, but now it's everywhere. Actually, the test came back positive, believe it or not. Yeah, and that's that's unusual. Many are called, but few actually uh, uh, show up. And um, uh, but when you have real Lyme disease, be thankful that they caught it early and treated it before it became latent and then late stage Lyme disease. So they did a good job. All right, so old buddy. I don't have to worry about Lyme disease if they knock it out with 21 days of uh, antibiotics. That right? should that should take care of it, but of course, follow up with your prescriber. And but as far as your question about the C diff, I think you're in great shape yeah. on that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Have another great uh, whatever. Thanks, and you as well. Okay. Whatever. Hey, take care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Area code six one eight. You're on weird medicine. You what's up, doctor? <laughs> you got to say yeah. hello to Tacey. She's your favorite. <laughs> Daddy like. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. disgusting. Dr. Steve, it's your old pal, Darren. Of course. I had a question about uh, lymph nodes in my neck. Okay. And throat. Um, previously I had a macro prolactinoma, nice. which left my pituitary gland limp like my PECA <laughs> yeah. and I was just hypothesizing that, um, maybe I'm having problems with my lymph nodes in my neck because of that. Is that a possibility? Well, tell, tell me a little bit about this. Uh, do you have multiple lymph nodes in your neck? How did you find them? Give me the whole story, starting in the beginning. Um, I just woke up one night and had, thought I had pulled a muscle in my neck. And when I woke up in the morning, I felt a big lump on the uh, right side of my neck. Front side or back inside, side? Inside, towards the throat. Okay. And... Um, I talked to you on Twitter about it, and I got put on some antibiotics, and it went away. Okay. But I'm just wondering if it's something I should ha- like um, seek out further tests. Well, is it gone now? Is it still gone? Yeah, it's gone. Okay, then I, I wouldn't. Um, but, but, Let me talk a little bit about lymph uh, nodes in the neck. So there's a okay. there's a chain of lymph nodes in the front of the neck and a chain of lymph nodes in the back of the neck. So you had a single tender, you know, painful lymph node that appeared on the anterior, the front part of the uh, cervical chain or the chain of the throat right near your thyroid gland. And these almost always um, are drawing from infections. Somewhere it could have been a zit on your scalp, and it drained down. Then it, it, the bacteria and uh, the um, uh, white blood cells decided to duke it out in that particular lymph node. And when that happens, it gets enlarged, and then there's a lot of inflammatory stuff going on. Fluid gets gets uh, transported to that area and secreted there, plus the white blood cells and all the inflammatory markers and stuff. And when you get one of those, my protocol always was if it's um, less, if it's a single one and it's less than a month old, see what happens. If it's painful, treat it with an antibiotic. If it's not painful, just watch it. If it lasts more than a month, it needs to have a needle stick in it and get a diagnosis mm-hmm. for it. If you treat it with antibiotics and it goes away, it ain't cancer. Mm-hmm. You know, because that's what you're worried about, right? You're worried about lymphoma or something like that. And, you know, cancer doesn't go away with, in the presence of antibiotics. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't come and go either. It just comes and stays. So most providers would say you had a single node, tender, treated with antibiotics, went away, forget about it. Now, if it keeps you up okay. at night... Go back and see them and let them feel for it. They could even do an ultrasound if you were really worried about it and just look and make sure that it really is gone. And you could do a little blood work, too, you know, just to make sure that you're in good, okay shape if it's wearing on your mind, you know. Um, and it's always good to get these second opinions from your primary care mm-hmm. even after you've talked to me because this isn't a second opinion. I'm just trying to, you know, sell tweaked audio. And you simply know, herbals. And simply herbals. <laughs> herbals. Herbals. I, uh, yeah, that's 
chip again. I was worried that Darren might have fucking lemon disease or a bunch of oranges or something. <laughs> hey, that's the wrong one. Hey. That, that was a... <laughs> That's what we call in the biz a callback. Oh, good. Yeah, Z. yeah. His okay, name. thanks. Thanks. So show yeah, us what a tag is. In the day. <laughs> thanks for clarifying that that was a callback. Yeah. All Cut right. that part out. <laughs> All right. Good talking to you, Doc. He's got... Uh, lady, die. you're looking hot. Tasty with your big boobas. And, uh, <laughs> Dr. Scott... Oh, yeah. With your man bun. Oh, yeah. Man bun. I'll catch you on the flip side, Father Muckers. All right. All right. You skippy Kaye. See you, man. See you. See you. <laughs> I do an okay chip online. I have a real hard time doing it. Wow. It's a horrible thing to do. The only thing, when I was on Chip Show... He had. Um, he said, "Oh, you're part of the chip army now." And I said something <laughs> stupid like, "Or more like the chip leggy, right, Chip?" And he's like, "You're good. You're good." And that was it. That's my only chip. That, that I was ever did. funny, Doctor <laughs> See, it's so stupid. The leggy. <laughs> the chip leggy. All right. All right. One more. Did the guy who waited forever Dr. ever C. call back? No, and I can't even, I can't even call him back. Mm. So. Rude, rude. Uh, well, it's what am I gonna do? I've been on testosterone replacement for a while, and I feel great. My father-in-law is sixty-seven or so, had prostate cancer about ten years ago, and had it removed. He's been cancer-free for ten years, but he won't consider testosterone replacement despite having tons of symptoms. Because he got told once that it's like throwing gasoline on a fire. Yeah. But since he's been cancer-free for 10 years, is he in the clear? And is there any PubMed articles out there that I could show him to convince him that he needs to get his testosterone back? That's the legal. Yeah. Uh, and I actually sent this guy some, some stuff. It's, it is a little counterintuitive. Mm-hmm. We were always taught... You have prostate cancer, no testosterone therapy, because just like he said, it's like throwing gasoline on a fire because testosterone or prostate cancer is primarily testosterone driven. But I've got um, a couple of studies. This is one from the Journal of Sexual Medicine, Testosterone Replacement Therapy, Following the Diagnosis of Prostate Cancer, Outcomes (laughs) and Utilization Trends. So they looked at people that got it anyway. And uh, let me see... um, it says, in this population-based observational study, so not great data, right? It's, it's better than anecdotal data, but it's observational. Uh, uh, in testosterone replacement therapy in men with a history of prostate cancer, treatment was not associated with increased overall or cancer-specific mortality. These findings suggest testosterone replacement therapy may be considered in men with a history of prostate cancer but confirmatory prospective studies are needed. So that's very interesting, isn't it? That you would think it would be just a plain absolute just no. no, just an absolute so, no. So do you think a doctor recommended he take um, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I don't testosterone know. or just his son-in-law? It, it could have been that he had a urologist that said, dude, your prostate's low, you're right. cancer-free. Yeah. Right. Hey, let's try this. And the guy had just, somebody had told him, don't ever take this because that's, yeah. I'm telling you that's what they trained us. Right. And so there are probably doctors out there that still say that mm-hmm. because that was the party line for so, so long. But so if a doctor says it to you now, don't you assume he knows what he's talking about? No, not about? necessarily because we're always going to th- – we tend to think catastrophically, at least a lot of oh, people okay. do. And there's, there's an evolutionary reason for that mm-hmm. because our ancestors who thought catastrophically – had a survival benefit right. because if you saw the you're standing out there hunting and gathering and you see the the grass start to move it could either be the wind or it could be a saber-toothed tiger ones that always assumed the worst mm-hmm. were the ones that got up in a tree and when it really was a saber-toothed tiger they survived right. and the ones that were cool and like oh nothing's going to bother me are the ones that and and even if it was just a 1% difference mm-hmm. in survival that's enough to have that um, gene be passed 
and amplify it over, you know, how many generations would that be? 10,000 generations or more, 100,000 generations. And so we tend to think catastrophically. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, that's why some people won't wear their seatbelt because they think they're going to get trapped in their car. You can in a, in an accident and die in a fireball, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And right. you can show that that happens sometimes. It's like mm-hmm. one in a million. Right. And you can show them that if they wear their seatbelt and don't get thrown from their car, they're you know they won't have a one in two chance of dying. So wearing your seatbelt obviously mm-hmm. makes more sense. And statistically, you can prove that it's a better strategy, but mm-hmm. people still think about that oddball <laughs> catastrophic event. Mm. That's right. why people are terrified to fly, even though, um, knock on wood, it's the it's the um, safest way to travel. You're much more likely to die in a car wreck mm-hmm. than you are an airplane wreck, even though when you have an airplane wreck, it's going to be catastrophic yeah. most of the time, mm-hmm. you know. So, so I guess anyway. it depends on the severity of the symptoms he's having that whether the testosterone would make it yes. worth his while. I, it, God dang it. That's she's awesome. She's meal. awesome. Yeah, it's, you have actually have been listening, so that's good. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. He's got to weigh the risks versus the benefits mm-hmm. and decide. Right. Is the, 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 are the symptoms I have right now, um, are they affecting me in such a way that I need to take something every day that I also have to overcome this fear that I have because some doctor told me don't ever take it? And he's got to weigh that. Mm-hmm. And that line's going to be, you get 100 people, that line will be different for yep. for all all 100 of those people. All right? Can we all do right. one more? Nope. nope. I think we're out of nope. here. Are we, we done? Go. Yeah, we got to go. Are you serious? We got to go deliver beer. Oh, okay. Well, all right. Then let, we? me, let me start do, the art track oh. music. I then, um, I'll do it. For the party. I'll do it. For the party. You can go play. Go frolic. Do you need me to go with you? No, no. I've just got to take the cakes over. Okay, I've got to go, go. to the hospital yeah. anyway, so... You go be a doctor. And then, uh, are you... Are you? I'm a beer winch. Okay. I got it. I'm well, a beer winch today. Check out um, Dr. Scott's uh, beer store at thebeerrunkingsport.com or facebook.com slash, what is it? Beer winch. The Beer Run Kingsport. Kingsport, Beer Run Kingsport, yep. It's a great place. Or facebook.com slash ETN Comedy. Or oh my Facebook.com God. slash Weird Medicine. <laughs> or <laughs> or <laughs> www. Yes, you remember when people used to go HTTP yeah. colon oh, backslash yeah. backslash. <laughs> www. Yeah, now we can just say go to drsteve.com. Yep. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. And I really or look forward to the us. time when we don't have to say at in front of tweets anymore. You've noticed, you might have noticed I'm trying to cut that out. No, mm-hmm. I have. Just say. Check us out at Weird Medicine or Lady Diagnosis or WM Scott, DR Scott WM. I haven't noticed, but I like it. Because everyone's got at in front of them. Why would we have to say that? Because there's still people like me that don't know. Yeah, well, they they shouldn't be on Twitter. They're going to get they're going to get hurt. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is dangerous, Dr. Steve. <laughs> Thanks always go to Dr. Scott, the uh, king of acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine. Right on. Slash beer winch. Thanks always go to Lady Diagnosis, who shows up. Appreciate that. <laughs> and I listen some. for Tacey, who's going to get her some later tonight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She feels it. <laughs> Lucky girl. Can't forget Rob Sprantz, Bob <laughs> Kelly, Greg Hughes, Anthony Cumia, Jim Norton, Travis Teft, Eric Nagel. He wrote, told our kids that. No, I did not. Yeah, scarred. No, I s- well no, have. no. This is what Hashtag happened. Scarred. I said, you know, I'm going to come back early from the thing, and then maybe we can. Oh, you know, and then the Beck was like, oh, 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 oh. get freaky. Yeah, freaky. That's what he said. And I said, yeah, <laughs> man, I'm going to be strutting my stuff. And then, you know, just to gross him out. Anyway, until next time, check your stupid nuts for lumps. <laughs> Quit smoking, get off your asses, and get some exercise. We'll see you in one week for the next edition of Weird Medicine. Bye. Well, that's beautiful. Bye.